So folks, I'm happy to let you know that Mr. Merrick Garland just did it again. He blew the doors wide open on Old Donnie in a way that was totally unexpected, above all, by Old Donnie himself. And he did it in two ways, both of which used the tactics of Trump against him. Because what Garland just did is, one, drive further evidence to the fact, he and his team, that you can draw at least some connection between the thugs on the ground, the the Trump intermediaries, and Trump himself. We'll talk a bit about that. But the main course here, the gourmet main course, is how old Donnie was trying to hide evidence. Trying to hide evidence and arguments still. Still trying to hide them from the people and from everybody in the legal system. And at the last second, what Garland just did was go public with those secrets Trump didn't want anyone to see. And they make Trump look even more criminal than he already has it's an oath keepers does he need to know that they also plan to use violence in order uh, for no. him to be vict guilty of seditious conspiracy no i mean it's what we call in the law gravy i mean it's like it'd be if if that evidence does exist that establishes a seditious conspiracy or at least a conspiracy to commit violence between trump himself and the proud boys who are going on trial right now as we speak but there are other conspiracies that the January 6th committee has been investigating, as well as federal and state investigators, Joy, including this whole fake electors plot that John Eastman and others uh, cooked up. And there doesn't need to be any overlap between the two. It's kind of an old law all the way going back to the Supreme Court case in 1943 of Kotiakos. You can have multiple different conspiracies. Uh, you know, prosecutors just need to prove one. And, you know, at yeah. this point, Donald Trump is facing many, many different investigations into many conspiracies. Is it possible in this inquiry by Judge Deary for Donald Trump to take the Fifth Amendment and not answer the question? Were, was any of this stuff planted? That is a great question. And so the answer is yes. So here... <laughs> Here is the conundrum. This is like the world's worst strategy. If you are a potential defendant and you know that there is a criminal investigation, then you don't want to also be a plaintiff. This reminds me when Donald Trump said, you know, I want to sue uh, the New York Times for defamation. And the general counsel of the New York Times said, you know what? Be my guest. Bring it on because then we get discovery. And of course, Donald Trump didn't do it. Well, here, by uh, Donald Trump being the plaintiff, he is the one who is asking for relief. So if he were to take the fifth and refuse to say whether any of these documents uh, were planted or not, then his case is going to be dismissed because the burden is on the plaintiff and he will not have fulfilled that. And Judge Deary said that on day one. He said, let's just be real. You are the plaintiff. You have the burden. You may have all sorts of reasons why you don't want to submit anything, but then you're not going to win here. And frankly, I think that is ultimately what's going to happen, because as you said, he's going to you know, when you're a defense lawyer, what you have on your side is very little except the element of surprise. So that's gone now. And the one thing he can't do is submit something that is false, because if he does that, Judge Deary is going to be all over him and it's going to be just another potential criminal charge because lying to a federal judge would be a problem, not just for the lawyers, but also for Donald Trump. So he has really strategically made a terrible blunder. Well, you know, Donald Trump uh, threatened to sue me on uh, through Twitter uh, 10 years ago when I first started calling him a liar on this program. And I begged him to sue me for exactly the same reason as The New York Times is that then I get to uh, put him under oath in a deposition. Uh, Harry Littman, uh, what about the intersection of uh, this uh, case now with the so-called Oath Keepers in Washington and what Donald Trump has to fear in what they might or might not raise in their defense? Right. So, look, you, as you said at the outset, Lawrence, there is no valid defense that says the Insurrection Act, I thought it was going to uh, be called into, into uh, you know, play. And therefore, that's the reason I had all the gear and everything else. Oh, and the reason of, for all the incendiary rhetoric, that was just talk. Uh, it, it won't. I don't think it will cut it, but it's bad for Trump. 
because he will be trying to emphasize everything he can about the earnestness with which Trump was communicating to the whole group, maybe through people, that in fact it was, you know, time to uh, to gear up and actually fight the powers that be to, as you say, mount an insurrection. So just thematically, it you know, it figures to be more bad news for Trump. And it's another instance of what Andrew's talking about. You know, he has just been leading with his chin and getting more and more cabin, not just in court, but in the public sphere. So if, for example, Deary uh, makes him put up or shut up, it will also restrict his ability to be bombastic in public and say, I declassified and all these other things. So the legal system is finally, finally sort of clamping its jaws around some of these claims of Trump and making it you know, harder for him both politically and, of course, legally. So listen to that. There's a couple things there. One, there's this real effort and a growing realization that while it hasn't been proven yet, there are increased efforts and increased likelihoods to draw a line between the thuggy groups like the Oath Keepers and all of that and the Trump people and Trump himself, and that could put them all in increased legal danger. But the big factor here continues to surround Donald Trump's unwillingness to actually make clear arguments, especially in court and in his court filings. And what that shows is how he's setting himself up for real danger just on his own. But that's before what Garland just did, because what he did was take Trump's secret arguments. Trump was only making arguments in secret. He wasn't actually stating them. He had his BS public arguments and then a bunch of secret arguments he was trying to put forward to limit his legal liability and his political li liability. And what Garland just did was say, fine, you want to play that game? We're going public and we're going to air your dirty laundry, air the evidence like never before. And it says here, new DOJ filing exposes Trump's secret objections and asks special master to call his bluff. And it notes, Team Trump is filing complaints under seal for some reason, but DOJ is discussing it not under seal so we can largely infer what Trump is upset about, the New York Times noted. The filing revealed that Trump's lawyers objected to Deary's request that they verify that the search inventory by the file by the DOJ is accurate, essentially daring Trump's team to assert his dubious claim that the FBI may have planted evidence in official court documents. The DOJ affirmed that its inventory is complete and accurate and urged Deary to require Trump's lawyers to state whether they believe the list of items seized from the property is accurate. Trump's lawyers also objected to Deary's request for them to explain whether they are claiming attorney-client privilege or executive privilege after Judge Cannon, the Trump appointee that ordered a special master review, failed to ask for a distinction. And it's it's unclear what their third objection was. And so Garland just aired the dirty laundry. We could infer some of this maybe in a speculative way, but what Garland just did is go out in public like never before in official public documents and say, here is the BS evidence and here are the BS arguments. They are spitting at the judge and at the public, the insulting, ridiculous, defenseless arguments they're making. Here it is for the world. Donnie, you've been called out. Now you have to make the case even stronger because everyone knows the BS you're spitting. Garland wanted to keep this quiet at the very beginning. He would have been very happy to do that. But the second you made this a public spectacle, Garland turned it back on you. And now every piece of your dirt is going to be given public scrutiny if it serves the interests of finding justice. Another brilliant move.